I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you for joining us for one of our talks today. Today, we're joined by the wonderful Travis Van Winkle to talk all things Netflix U. And one of the things that you you described in when you first started looking at this character at, at Carrie is that one of the questions you asked yourself was, what are his secrets? What are the things that he's hiding? And what doesn't he want other people to know? And obviously, you know, we learned certain elements of that throughout the show, but there's also a lot more layers and textures to that question. And so how did asking yourself that question about him as a character really serve as the building blocks for how you started to build him out and develop him? Yeah, that's a good question. I think we're all flawed. It's just part of our design. And so whenever it comes to things that we don't want people to know, we all want to come off, uh, you know, polished in some regard. And I don't think Carrie was any different, but we all have some secrets that we're harboring that influence our behavior, things that we want to repress. And, you know, hopefully as we get older, we have less and less of those. Um, but I remember having that question and I asked Sarah Gamble what she thought. And the response was actually really interesting to me. And she basically, what she said was, you don't really have many. You are who you say you are. You walk the walk, you talk the talk, you come from a really healthy, flourishing background. And that was somewhat liberating to me because I was thinking there was some deep darkness inside of this guy. Maybe that's why he related to, to Joe's character. And maybe that's, he saw like a kinship with him and wanted to liberate him because he had to somehow fight through that, own, that stuff in himself. And she gave me a totally different path. Um, so I don't know. I think for me, I definitely asked myself that question and no matter what you're going to have, insecurities. And I think I, what I pinned for Carrie was just the main insecurity that his wife was just so much smarter and more put together than he was and how that was a source of shame for him that he had to manage and navigate and continue to work hard to hopefully, you know, see on an even playing field with her. So that's, that's kind of where I went with it, but it's always important to ask that question. And it's so interesting to hear that that was the direction that Sarah saw for him as a character and that that's where you took him to because he is someone who has that kind of internalized drive and real dedication. Um, and I'd, I'd been interested in watching the show if you'd felt like it came from something circumstantial that drove him to that place of like, if I just keep driving myself, if I just keep leveling up as he describes it, then everything will be okay. But for you, was that just part of his natural persona because of that conversation that you had with Sarah? Yeah, so what I decided to create was his strong desire to give back and to enhance people's lives. Carrie is the master of self-optimization, the self-proclaimed master of self-optimization. Uh, and he wants to not only optimize his own life in every way, he wants to optimize others. And I think that there is a noble pursuit in him doing his part in helping others find themselves. And so for me, the quest was noble. The mission was, was true and his purpose was very clear. And it was to help these men and whoever he comes into contact uh, whoever he comes into contact with to live their best lives and to be their best selves. And so for me, that was a, that, that was a very clear path that I could play and I could play loudly, quietly, any direction. And it, it's quite funny to watch that journey because, you know, he, he does come from a good place with it, but he doesn't necessarily stop to read the room to see if that's what somebody wants from him. Um, you know, particularly with Joe when he takes him out on that camping expedition. Um, and so was that kind of a fun line to play with in like, how how is he doing this when it's with someone who is refusing it at every single step and every single turn and he really thinks that he's got something to offer and just keeps trying? So I, I didn't see it as I was reading the room um, falsely. I, what I saw as was a man that has so much resistance that this resistance is a sign that I need to keep going because beyond that resistance is a breakthrough. And so for me, I was reading the room. Carrie was reading the room and he knew that that was a survival response to someone that's protecting something deep and dark inside of themselves. So as Carrie was reading the room, he knew his job was to push Joe to his limit because that's where the magic is. And so I think Carrie actually reads the room pretty well. Um, uh, and is very much in tune with that. And so that's, that's the angle that I, I continued to play with him was he might have his own methods that he thinks is the best approach for that breakthrough that other people might not, might not respond to, but Carrie's success rate 
it's undeniable. And so there is a strong sense that what he does works and he's just going to keep going down that lane. Yeah. No, now that you say that, that absolutely makes sense. And, and it is so fun to watch that scene between Sherry and Carrie when they suddenly realize the actual truth, when they've overheard Love and Joe in the other room. And there's a lot of timing that comes into that scene because it's, okay, what's the moment inside the room where they've heard, how much have they heard, you know, how are they trying to play their way out of this situation? What's the moment where they suddenly like are going to turn to each other and be like, okay, now, now we're enacting the plan that we just made really quickly in 10 seconds. And so what were a lot of the beats that you wanted to play to in that particular scene, because they're processing so much in such a minute amount of time. There's a couple of things I'll say about that. That was in, in some of the original scripts, there was a moment missing in that scene where it really showed the strategy behind um, Carrie and Sherry. And it was, it, it, there was something that was just missing where I wanted it to be more clear. And so I started to have a conversation with Sarah and I love what I loved about working with Sarah Gamble is the collaboration. We were really able to share each other's ideas and I was able to share mine and she would really hear me and respond. And I thought that we had a really great working relationship. And so that moment was really important to me where we could, we could show that we were, a, a team that could strategize and we worked together in the moments that you didn't see us. I wanted the audience to see the strength of Sherry and Carrie somehow in that. And I love that it came across that way. And there was, what I love about that scene, playing that scene in particular is you get to play something that the audience doesn't necessarily know where your head's at. The other characters in the scene don't know where your head's at, but we know. And so it's almost this, this subtle game where you have to portray one thing, but you really, you're really holding on to a really, you know, deep piece of information that you cannot let out. And there's something about that tension as a performer that's fun to hold on to. So um, that was a fun scene to just let build. I really, I really enjoyed that scene. And we know from the first conversation about the foursome coming together in that way, that this isn't the first time that Sherry and Carrie have been swingers and they say to that effect and they even have paperwork and NDAs already drawn up oh, yeah. and, and basically say, oh yeah, we've done this with other people in the neighborhood and the community. Um, and I thought that was such a fun detail because for you and Shalita Grant, who plays Sherry in the show, did you start to think about some of the dynamics with other characters in the show and who they'd possibly been with and how that influenced even just a small passing interaction that we might see on screen. Yeah, you know, I think that there was definitely some of, of that story building in my mind. Um, I think what was, what was really interesting about that was, I think Shalita and I had a different approach to that, or, or Sherry had a different approach to that than Carrie. I, the questions I asked was, who's the one that really instigates the swinging more? Is it, is it Carrie or is it Sherry? Am I, am I doing that because I just want to be supportive of my wife? Or is that something that we're both really passionate about? I was asking a lot of those questions. And I believe Sherry used it in somewhat as a form of manipulation. Oh, if we can get to know what everyone looks like with their pants down, we can get them to do whatever we want. You know, we have more power, more sway. So there might have been more manipulation in there. And for Carrie, Carrie just likes to have a damn good time. And he likes to really celebrate his humanity and his uh, his love for himself. And he wants to celebrate other people. And I feel like Carrie's journey is, what I love about playing Carrie is Carrie is, he's literally always celebrating life. And there's something so fucking charming about that as an actor to be able to like chew on that. And I love that you brought up there the love that he has for himself. And he is a character who is very comfortable in his own skin in a lot of different ways. It's not just a physical thing. It's like he's very happy with who he is and he's following the path that he wants in life. He's in the relationship that he wants. He's the parent he wants to be. And was it important to you that a lot of aspects of his character be a real celebration of that? Because that's part of what he seems to be trying to instill in Joe and wanting him to be able to have for himself as well. Yeah, I think one thing that, that Carrie that I really wanted to make sure that Carrie wore is this desire for excellence in every aspect of his life. And I came up with the, that he has achieved that in most areas and there's no stop and there's no ceiling, but he's reached a certain level of excellence and he is, he's maybe he hasn't gotten there completely, but he is, he is pretty far up the mountain uh, close to achieving that. And so, 
yeah, I think that there was a sense that I, there, that I really, Carrie wanted to liberate Joe. He wanted Joe to have the same kind of freedom with his own life that he found for himself. And he wanted, he wanted to gift that to Joe. And with that striving for excellence as well, and the fact that anytime he achieves something, it's like, okay, great, I've achieved this. Now here's the next goal that I'm moving towards. Does that also actually open up a fair amount performance-wise because it gives you that really great opportunity that, there, like you said, there is no ceiling. And that's also then true of your performance because anytime you reach a certain space, he's already going somewhere new and different with it. That's what I loved about this season in particular is the journey I got to go on as an actor, each episode was a completely different set of circumstances and scenarios and different environment. You know, I had the woods, which was its own thing, its own take on masculinity and, you know, somewhat maybe potentially toxic masculinity, but I don't see it like that with Carrie. Carrie is someone that, yeah, they talk about killing things and he's, he hurts a squirrel to, to basically, you know, get Joe flustered and to activate Joe. So I'm, I don't, I don't support those things. His strategy was to open up Joe with those. Those are all different um, techniques that he used. But overall, Carrie was about expressing his emotions and, and, and being okay, being vulnerable and embracing the softer side of him. And so I think that there was actually some healthy elements of masculinity in that episode. And then when it came to the swinging, you know, he talks about being an optimized man as, an, uh, as a man that, uh, you know, bisexual man is a man that is truly optimized. And there's something really beautiful about this ownership. And then that whole swinging episode was a completely different movie. It was a completely different scenario. And then the, the cage for the, the last two episodes, it, it just pulled back the facade. It, it pulled back the layers and allowed to see two humans in a, in a relationship. And so for me, the, the journey was so, it was so rich this season as a performer to be able to play all those different elements. It was, it was a freaking ride. And in terms of the excellence as well, his physicality is something that's important to him as a character. And I know that you did a lot of extensive training to capture that for yourself as well. What was it that you specifically wanted to be able to reflect in terms of the character's physicality through the training that you were doing and the specific things that you worked on? So in the script, he owns a supplement company. He's the master of self-optimization. He leads men on men's retreats. He he's definitely, he was written as somebody that was just a strong person. And so it just made sense that I, I wanted to put on 10 pounds of straight muscle. So I hired a guy named Grant Roberts and he gave me this incredible plan. And I did everything he said in my own, my own garage gym. I, I ate all the food and the specific nutrition. And I just, I was a, I was a, a great student and I just said yes to whatever he said. And I was able to put on 10 pounds of muscle and maintain that throughout the show. And I thought the way that I, I, I really, uh, I feel best inside the skin of a character is if I really embody what I feel like the physicality of that character would be. And I knew Carrie was strong. And so to just, I didn't want to coast and just show up in my normal physique. I wanted to feel incredibly strong and in my body. And I wanted that to show because I thought that that would, it would allow people to believe that Carrie was more who he said he was. And I'm, I'm really happy that I did because I found physicality with him. I found a confidence um, in, in my own world, in my real world. I found, wow, I can, I, I can put on 10 pounds of muscle quickly. I can transform my nutrition. This is actually working. I felt empowered myself. And so I feel like there was a lot of really beautiful crossover between myself and Carrie that, that I got to, to really play with that showed up on screen. Yeah. And you, you know, you were obviously bringing up the journey that Sherry and Carrie take in the cage with one another. And that's also the moment where we get a lot of that backstory and that information that you were talking about where he really, his one insecurity is my wife is too good for me and I don't know that I'm worthy and I'm always just trying to be as good as she is. Um, were those details that you had early on and that Sarah shared with you, or were those things that once you got the scripts, you were like, oh, okay, that's the backstory. And that just adds another layer and texture to what I've built as the backstory of this couple's relationship? So Sarah and I had some really amazing conversations in the beginning and she let me know what the arc was. And she gave me a tremendous amount of details about who Carrie was and the journey that he was gonna go on. And I, I believe there were some earlier conversations about some of these details, but 
I believe as the scripts came out, more was revealed to me. And so I was able to then just continue to add and, and keep digging with him. And that's what I love about television is in film, you film maybe for one or two months and then it's done. In TV, it's it's long form. And so you get to continue to, to, to build and craft your understand your character more as you're playing him. And as each script comes out, you really get to see this new uh, experience that you're about to have for the next two weeks, however long it takes to film. So it unfolds in the same way that real life unfolds. You don't know what's going to happen next week. And you, in in acting, and when you do television, you get scripts, you know, we we would get two scripts at a time. I would get those two scripts. And I'm always so excited to see the new scripts because it reveals to me what my next four weeks are going to be about what emotions my next four weeks are going to entail the journey that I get to go on over the next four weeks. So it's, it's a really exciting process doing this long form storytelling. I think you said as well that you knew, you knew right from the get go that they were both going to end up in the cage and that that yeah. was going to be part of the arc. And that we were going to actually didn't know that they were going to survive on the other side of it. I, and we're thinking about, <laughs> no, I knew I was oh, t- at the very beginning that we go to the box and that we make it. Yeah that we make it out. And that was a big, I loved knowing that beforehand Yeah. Uh, because it just empowered me to understand that the dynamic between Carrie and Sherry was real, that their love was real, that they've worked through their own shit and they are who they say they are. And that really, I think that helped authenticate any interaction that her and I had throughout the series because I knew that was the result. Yeah. And what was that journey in taking this relationship that the two of you had really been building up and then getting to take it into those two episodes and spend every single scene almost stripping it down further and further to more of its foundational elements? Because that's such a great thing to get to do performance wise. Oh, man, it was so nice to just to just every every day that we filmed and we filmed in sequential order in the cage and we got to actually rehearse. Uh, Before each episode, we got to rehearse a little bit to understand what the feel was in the cage, the blocking of the cage. And so then to shoot in sequential order, it felt like we were doing a mini play. And to be able to unravel your character day by day was was a process that is very gratifying. And the cage also helps elicit that because you're shooting in a box. And so you know, you, there's not a lot of space for movement. You're sharing the same oxygen and breath. It is a confined space. And just that environment alone brings out a lot of behavior that only that box would bring out. And so to me, that, that process, I think we filmed a total of six days for those two episodes. So it wasn't that, that many hours of actual filming, but um, very impactful when it came to uh, revealing who Sherry and Carrie really are. You'll say as well, because you're filming in such a confined space, did that almost add to the claustrophobia that your character starts feeling and really kind of understanding, you know, a certain level of the mental state that he ends up in? A hundred percent. And I think, I think our environment is so important. That's why doing a lot of green screen stuff, you have to give it to the actors that do that and do that well, because that's a lot of imaginary work. And, you know, it takes, it takes a skilled performer to be able to pull that off and to like really be in their body and make you feel like they're feeling the environment and all the conditions. And I think being in situation, I always liked as a performer being in, in any outside condition, whether it's extreme heat, whether it's raining, is it snowing, being in the conditions help naturally just pull you into an authentic place. And being in the cage was something that really helped ground everything because there was nowhere to go. And you couldn't do much. And so that confined space, it, it, it just provokes, just provokes all these thoughts and emotions in you that being trapped in a cage would. So yes, it was very helpful. It was very helpful. And what was your process for tracking the different stages of dishevelment and kind of psychological state that he ends up in? Because each time we come back to the cage, a certain amount of time has passed and they've had more time sitting there. You know, you're not able to sleep anywhere comfortable. There's no bathroom there. You said there's very little air and circulation. There's nowhere to move and nowhere to go. And so each time that extends by a few hours, it puts both of them into a different state of dishevelment. It does. It does. The way that I tracked it was by the hours and, and how many, uh, the hours that I had to sleep in there as well. Cause if you think about getting poor sleep or sleeping on the hard floor, how that would affect you. Um, I think breaking down a script and, and really analyzing it 
in the preparation is really important to know those different stages. Um, and so I think a lot of the, the prep work was understanding the timeline. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think for me, it was more, how long has it been since I've had a real meal? How many hours have I been in that cage? And so I tracked it hour by hour. Um, and how many times have I gone to the bathroom? Because that's the thing, like, I wanted to know how I was, I'm all about optimization, Carrie's about optimization and, and how he's functioning and how, when he's not functioning, how does that affect him mentally? So there was just, there was a lot of stuff to play with. There's also so much great comedy in you. And what I love is the way that it kind of almost bubbles underneath the surface sometimes as well. It's not necessarily about, okay, we're, we're delivering a punchline and there's a rhythm to it. It's like the humor is in the things that people are saying or the way that they're projecting themselves. And so especially being able to watch the first couple of seasons and see tonally what Sarah and the rest of the team have created, how did you want to approach that side of your role and your character coming into the series? Coming into the show, I did not know what the show was. I'd heard of it, but I'd never seen seen it and so I didn't want to study the show too much and come in and give them what they always had I wanted to bring my own take on 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 the character yet you also have to know what the tone of the show is and so in some of the early meetings they mentioned how um, subtle and how much under you play everything so they want everything to be grounded and, and just just really believable and so when it comes to the writing, some of the writing is absolutely bonkers. It's ridiculous. And so to play that in any other way, but play it under, it wouldn't work. And so you have to really honor the tone of the show and, and really be in the situation and the circumstances in order for that stuff to work. And um, it, it was the cage, some of the cage scenarios that Shalita and I had, I will, I'll, I'll remember those forever. They're, they're so ridiculous. And with this role overall, what are the really unique aspects of your craft that you feel like you got the opportunity to either explore a little bit more for the first time or really enhance and evolve from working on this? Yeah, you know, I think, I think this show has a lot of comedic elements to it and it's not, it's not a broad comedy. And so I feel like there, there was a lot of nuance that I've been, I've been acting now for almost 20 years. And I feel like this, I got the, I got to pull out all the different tools that I've learned over the 20 years in this particular role. It gave me a chance to really express everything. And I think another thing, the show is very technical because you're, you're having to hear Joe's monologue and we hear that as actors. So they actually have this guy named Danny would actually read it out loud while we were performing. And so as an actor, you have to, embrace these long pauses and these long moments and really embody that with some kind of behavior as you would in real life. And so there became a very, there's a very technical aspect and element to this show that was really nice to be able to, um, I just could, I, I really, I really had to focus a lot on, on that element of the game. Well, I really loved watching everything that you did with this character in this season. It was so fantastic. Um, thank you so much for sharing all of that, Travis. Really yeah, appreciate it. So much fun. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, we'll, um, we'll have a chat on the, the next project I do. See you soon.